Electric bikes now come in all shapes and sizes, big, small, long, short, even ones like this that have a sidecar. It's got an actual sidecar, how cool is that? And now that the price of gas is permanently high, Kiwis are all aboard with electric bikes. The only problem is, how do you find a good one? And can you find a good one on a budget? And that is today's mission. My destination was Bikes and Beyond in Newmarket to look at three e-bike options, ranging from super affordable to fancy, and to give me the quick rundowns, the man behind the store, Christian Hoff Nielsen. So we've got here an entry level version here. First and foremost, how much does this cost? So this is $2,300 for your 19 kg of very light, easy living bike. Okay, and what sort of range will you get out of this? Who depends how much of a ballerina you are, because <laughs> if you're a rugby player like you and I, you might be looking at 25 Ks. But if you're less than that, then you might be 40 Ks, because it is still a bike. So it's all about mass and, move, mass and moving about. Okay, so now I saw you demonstrated earlier that this folds up pretty tightly. What sort of person buys this kind of bike? Who we've got boaties, we got people going to A and B, say Newmarket Station is just over there to get that last mile solution. It's a really neat mix into the mix. This will do 40 kilometers an hour. It'll go with lights, of course, and all that stuff, but I wouldn't recommend a day's driving like this. This is to have in your boot, to have in your caravan, to have in your car and maybe go, yeah, a morning's ride. Okay, so you wanted something a little more up market, a little bigger. Yep. Where do we go from here? So this is about a whole day's out. You've got your bottle holder on the side of the bike, which is fantastic. Doesn't impede in your traveling through with your legs. You've got adjustable suspension. You've got lights. The handlebars are curved towards you. Do you see that? So you're actually sitting. This is again about the car. That's what we really specialize in. Having the comfort of the car, the fun of the car, the ease of use. So it's got ability to hold your drinks. Nice big rack. Okay, so what about price and range for this one? This is 3.9, so it's got your throttle and it's got your torque sensing assistance. So same technology in terms of use as the first bike, but much more power, much more range. This will do nearly 100 kilometers. So you're talking double the range. Okay, let's just say I want to impress my friends. Where do we go from here? So if you want to go Rolls Royce, yeah. That's what we want, right? Like the real Chesterfield feeling. Right. Then we like to say Kalkoff. It could also be Scott. It could also be other brands. But you're talking Bosch. You're talking German. You're talking, yeah, finesse, sensitivity to your riding. This really feels like you're on a carpet. It's magic. This looks really European. Maybe it's that light gray look, but it looks it looks Icelandic, you know? It's got yeah, that and it Danish looks like feel. it's from 1919, you know? It's just like a <laughs> bottle of wine. It's gotten better through the years. Okay, so tell me about this one. Price and range. You're two grand up again. Okay. So you're no longer at four, you are past the six. Um, you've got tires that on their own are probably worth $130. So just in terms of tires, we've gone from say $25 a tire on the first one to 50 and now to over 100 so everything is high spec um, you've got a pretty heavy bike still they're all around 24 kg so that doesn't decrease it's actually wrong even to think that it would because as you add steel mud guards bigger forks and that kind of thing you actually add weight so the specification will not make it drop in kilograms it'll make it higher in terms of range and ability this is your new toyota corolla except that it's not Japanese, but it will go anywhere, anytime. We have customers doing upwards of 15,000 kilometers of this. We've got Uber Eats drivers using these to deliveries, kebab people. I mean, it's 25 to 75. There is no age group. It's not even gender specific. This could just as well be a lady that wants to really nip around town anytime. So there's three very popular but very different e-bikes and I'll test all three very soon. But with such a wide variety of e-bikes in all shapes and sizes comes an even wider variety of accessories and gadgets. We've got here a cup holder, but it doesn't only take coffee, of course. It holds potatoes, which are the most important things in the galaxy. And it's thermal as well. Yeah, yeah, it'll keep them warm or keep you warm, whichever Fantastic. way. Fantastic. Okay, so as far as other gadgets go, some of these bikes have GPS built in. Yeah, the idea is that if it ever should be stolen, you wouldn't necessarily know when. And so you can backtrack on our tracker. We've got it open source, so anybody that knows the phone number of that bike 
basically can go back and say where was it Tuesday or where has it been since Friday if it was stolen Friday evening. So when you find out Monday morning that it's been stolen, you can basically go back to your log and see who, who in ideally took it. Because of course, once you have the time and the date, the CCTV of the different stores, workplaces, etc., will have footage of that bike leaving. So you will even get a picture of the person stealing it. And then beyond that, we've also got your very single simple $99 proximity alarm that we basically put into the bike. So this is not tracked, but the deterrent of the noise will mean that as you are not the owner of the bike, i.e. you're not switching off the alarm, you come and touch it or you take it, it starts wee 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 screaming like the old cars did. And I bet you no thief would want to be riding a bike that says wee 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 wee. So let's just say, if I wanted to steal that bike right now, yep. for example, yep. I'm just going to jump on it. No, nope. that's right. No I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> See, nobody's going to ride around like that. No, no, I'm bringing it back. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, of course, you're the owner. So you can just take the remote and just press unlock. There you go. It's fed off the bike. So what's really brilliant is that that alarm will never be flat. For as long as you have your bike, your battery is going to be charged because you're going to charge it when you need it. Oh, this has got a potato holder as well. That's yeah, fantastic. they all could do that. We do that specifically for the event, I think. It's got LED lights. Oh, I that's $2,300 as well. So that's actually the same price as the folding bike. This is a Watt Wheels bike. Okay, one stupid question is how do I charge it up? So it's got a little plug here on the side. And that's just your, your pin goes in there. And how long does it typically take to charge a hybrid bike? So bike. new chargers will be quite fast, three hours. Oh, really? But I tend to do it at night. Ecotricity would have told you it's better to charge at night. It's right, cheaper. yes, it is. Much cheaper. <laughs> it's a good plug for Ecotricity then. It nice is, done. hey, we, we don't want to plug them too much, but they're great guys. <laughs> Christian just made my job even easier, giving me the ideal spot to plug Ecotricity, which makes these videos possible. They're our country's only electricity provider, which is carbon zero certified. That means every electron they provide is 100% renewable from only wind, hydro and solar. So grab yourself some green cred and save some money while you're at it by joining up today at ecotricity.co.nz. But for now, it's time to test each of those three e-bikes, starting with the most affordable option. This is bike number one, and I have zero assist on right now. I'm going to increase that to two to go. Crikey. Okay, this moves pretty fast. Uh, too much power. One. There we go. Assist to one. Throttle is on the left. You know, for a little bike, this is all right. Oh, look at this. I've got a cycle path here all to myself. I'm going downhill right now, so it's a piece of cake. I was a bit worried this smaller bike was going to be a little bit skittish. But it feels fine. Woo! Okay. <laughs> This thing goes pretty quick. I can increase the power as well. Let me aim that down. Maximum power is number five. Far out. I can change gear. Nope, other way. This is effortless, man. This is just effortless. I like this little bike. This has got it all going on. Turn the power down because this is a bit too powerful. Now I'm no bikeologist, but I thought a little bike like this was going to be kind of skittish and wobbly, but no, it's actually pretty decent. I've also got a throttle. If I don't want to pedal, I can just do that. And I can increase the power all the way up to five, press the throttle down, and it takes off. I could see this bike being perfect for city dwellers or people without much room in their house who just want to cycle in the city or want something really convenient and really cheap because basically for this price it's only about five months worth of petrol. Why, hang on, why am I pedaling? I've got a throttle here. Oh okay, so it's struggling a little bit up the hill. Let me change gear down a bit. That's a bit easier. I feel liberated on a bike. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm a car guy, I love cars, but 
I'm out here in the open. I, I feel like, you know, feel so much better on a bike. Ah, I like this machine. And before those endorphins wear off, it's time to swap over my cargo and try out bike number two. Oh, this is much more comfortable already. I can feel the difference. But I do not want to be, oh, good Lord, this is a heavy bike to be going up a hill on. All right, time to turn on some assistance. Oh yeah, this is a step up. Definitely, this is a de this is definitely a step up. Oh yeah, already just on assist one. It is a much more comfortable bike. Like that first bike was good, but this is noticeably better. Definitely, this is my one to beat so far. It's just more comfortable. The tires are bigger. The seat's more comfortable. There's less impact on the road as well. Okay, we're going up a hill now. Let's turn the assist up. Let's, what the heck, let's live large. Let's put it up to assist five. Oh yeah. Oh, that's interesting. This one has torque sensing as well. It's not just on or off with the power like that first bike. This one, it will respond to how much pressure you're putting on the pedal. So if you're just pedaling lightly, it will just go lightly. But if you're putting the pressure on, oh yeah, it takes off. But like the other one, I have a throttle here as well. I need to change gear, so I'm going up a hill. I like this bike. I really like this. It feels good, it's responsive, it's intelligent with the torque response as well. It's got all the bells and whistles, a color display, GPS, and it's really comfortable to sit on. I like this bike. That first one was good, but comparing it to this, this is a whole new level. Yep, I like this one. I feel good. I drive riding this, I really feel good. It's it's so much more comfortable. I feel like I can relax. That first bike definitely uh, I liked it. It's a lower speed bike. It's for the city. This one you could go cross country in this thing. You can go off roading and everything. Yeah, this is a sweet machine. I like this one. I really cannot see how the expensive German bike can be better than this because this feels really good. Without the assist, it is still a little heavy though, to be honest. But with the assist, ugh, diesel. But with the assist, it is a dream to drive. It's like from moving from an old Mini to a Toyota Crown. Again, it's doing good, much better than the first bike, but it's still struggling a little bit up this hill. It, you do really have to change gear, go to a lower gear. So far, this second one was my e-bike to beat, so I was eager to see if the third and most expensive option could be noticeably better. I'm going to use a little bit of assist. Oh, brilliant. Now, unfortunately, oh, too much assist. Let's change gear. I'm still in that early getting the feel for it stage. I'm going to take, I'm going to cheat and take the sticker off this dashboard here so I can see. Don't tell anyone. Ah, so this is the Rolls Royce of bikes, huh? Gosh, it feels good. Okay, so we're in eco mode right now. And change gear a little bit. I'm going to increase it. Unfortunately, the entire display is in German. I know you can change it to English, but I do not have any interest in changing that. So right now, my Stretzke Gesamt is 0.5 kilometers. A bit more. Now we're in sport mode. You know, I'm going to go to maximum, which is turbo or in German, Torbo. Okay. So this one also has torque detection, so it can feel how much pressure you're putting on the pedals and deliver assistance according to how much pressure you're putting on. So if I put a little bit more effort on, it increases the power it's putting in. This is much more comfortable, I've got to be honest. This is a noticeable step up from the mid-range bike. It's hard to say at this point, but if I had to choose, I might take the mid-range bike just because it's more in my price range. Okay, we're off the road now so I can concentrate on the quality of feel without worrying about imminent death. Oh, you know what? It goes over the speed bumps much easier than the other one. See, this bike is definitely suited for bigger, taller people. If you're over six feet tall, this one's got the power and the strength and the size in its frame 
to look after your frame size. Or perhaps if you are a little larger, a bit more, as they say, aerodynamic, then this bike will handle your weight. I would say this is a maybe a 20% increase in terms of ride quality over the mid-range bike, but a 200% increase in quality over the lower end bike. So when I first got on that first entry level bike, I thought, oh, how much better than this can it be? This is fantastic. And then I got on the mid-range bike and it was fantastic, a step up. Now I'm on the Rolls-Royce and it is incomparable. So there's a lesson for you. If you're looking at buying an e-bike, go and ride it. Don't just buy it online. Man, this is nice. This is really nice. I can't think of any other adjectives. It's nice, it's glorious, it's comfortable. The tires are big, the wheels are big. It's got all the creature comforts and a crazy long range. More power than you need. I'm in mid power right now and that's more than enough. And of course, with the torque sensing, it can detect how much power you're putting in. Okay, so we're going up the hill. Now I'm gonna increase power to Torobor. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, this is having no trouble at all getting up this hill. Effortless. This is what you're paying the extra money for. This is the Rolls Royce of bikes, man. This is, this is, this is intense. The small bike has a lot going for it. It's practical, it's small, it's affordable, it's foldable, and it's really nimble at low speeds doing stuff like this. But in terms of comfort and security on the road, this is the Rolls Royce. This is why it costs more, man. Very impressed. And now a quick summary of the pros and cons of each bike, starting with the entry-level folding bike, the Onya F19, which has price, low weight and portability working in its favor, and it's also the most nimble of the three at low speed. Although it's not as comfortable as the others, has the lowest all-electric range, and smaller tires means it doesn't like the bumps and doesn't feel as secure at higher speeds. Next up is the mid-range Evinci Kia, which is decent value being less than a year's worth of petrol these days, and it's incredibly comfortable with big tires that make it feel very secure at speed with a very good electric range. It also has gadgets like torque sensing and GPS, which make it a very versatile everyday replacement for a car. But it's not as portable as the first bike, and there are cheaper full-size options available if budget is your number one deciding factor. And lastly, the third bike in the test is the Kalkoff Endeavor 5B Season, and the biggest pro is the quality of ride which is noticeable. It also has the strongest, torquiest motor out of the three and the longest range. Plus, with its maximum weight of up to 170 kilograms, this is a big, strong bike for big, strong people. The only downsides are, of course, you're paying for that quality, and without the assistance of the motor, it's a heavier bike. And there you have it, a taste of three very different e-bikes at three very different price points. They each have their individual pros and cons, but the most important piece of information I could give is not to buy the first one you see online, but instead go to a store and actually try some different bikes before you buy. Because as I found out, every bike rides very differently, but they do all have one thing in common. When you invest in an e-bike for getting around town, you'll never need to worry about parking or insurance or petrol.